This week's lure might seem a little odd, a little out there, maybe even a little gross. But if there's one thing I wouldn't mind getting eaten by a fish, it's a tick. I haven't worked with balsa wood in forever. But I was thinking that this little lure, it's gonna need to be made out of balsa wood. I'm definitely gonna need some floating power with this bait, because it's gonna be so small. If I used a denser wood, I don't think there's any way I could get it to float. Are you guys ready to be grossed out? So I gotta find a nice top angle view of an engorged tick, and I gotta cut that out first. It seems like their shapes, they're not consistent. God, this is disgusting. But uh, it's an oval. Ugh. Okay, I'm not, I don't think you guys need to see all this. I'm gonna find a good picture and I'll get back to you guys. Who is mowing the lawn? Every time. Okay, I found a nice juicy one. It's right at three quarter inches long. That's probably big. That'd be an enormous tick if it was engorged, I think, but that's definitely as small as I wanna make it. I think. It's just so hard to get good action out of tiny baits like this. That's for sure the smallest I want to go. Ugh. I'm gonna have to trim the thickness down of this board too, but I'll just cut it down after I cut this out. Well, at least it's a nice simple shape. That was slightly dangerous. I didn't lose a finger though. You gotta be really careful when you're doing tiny pieces like this on the bandsaw. And this is butter soft wood, so that blade can just shoot straight through that wood and right into your finger. So now this is too thick. That's the top profile, that's the side profile. And I'm gonna cut some round shape to it. I'm gonna look at a picture from the side of a tick and then I'm gonna draw the lines and cut the side profile. It really feels like I'm not cutting anything with this balsa wood. Super soft wood. So that is the blocked out shape for the engorged tick. I left a little bit of wood so it looks like there's a head, or I don't know if that part of the tick is the head or if it's just like a sucker thing, I don't know. I'm drawing some lines now on this little tick to carve to. I gotta round off all of the corners to give this bait some shape. So this is a really tiny thing to be carving on with a super sharp razor, but since it's balsa wood, I think I'll be okay. I don't need much force to get through it, so if the knife does slip, there won't be much force behind it. Hopefully. Yeah, that's really easy to carve. Now I just gotta sand all that smooth and it'll really look like a little tick. Oh, that'd be disgusting if there was something on you that was engorged that big that you had to get off. Can you imagine that? Ew. I'm gonna use a strip of 100 grit sandpaper with a sanding block, round off all the corners. Need to get a fan going. It's like 90 degrees in here. In my hastiness, I forgot to cut a lip slot out on this bait while it was blocked out. It's a lot easier to cut the lip slot when it's not all carved out and shaped like this because you have a flat surface to go against. But if I'm just really careful, I'm just gonna hold it by hand. This is balsa wood, so it's gonna be easy to cut through. And I'm just gonna cut the lip as straight as I possibly can. I've got one of these nice razor saw blades too that cut a really precise line. By the way, this is going to be a topwater wake bait, so I need to cut a lip slot that's perpendicular to the uh, horizontal line of this bait.
a good way to tell if you're uh, on your mark too is you just take the saw blade, lift it up and look at it from the top angle like that. And you can see if you're actually perpendicular and if you're going straight and everything. You can even see from this angle how uh, tilted your cut is, like if the lip is going to come this way or this way too much when you insert it all the way in. This tick is also going to be a through wire bait since it's made out of balsa wood. The wood's too soft to depend on holding any hardware in it, so I have to make it through wire. So this is the belly and that's the line. I'm going to cut on to a certain depth and that's what the wire will set into. It's just going to have a hook coming off the back and a line tie on the front in front of the lip. This is the wire I'll be using. It's the thinnest wire I have, but I'm just checking to see if it fits. It does. The next step is to make the lip. And I'm going to use aluminum on this lure's lip, mainly because I want this to be the only thing that weighs the lure down so it sits upright in the water. And I think this aluminum will weigh enough to where I won't need to put lead or anything else in it. And it'll sit upright and it'll run upright too. So I just drew out the lip. It's going to be a one centimeter long by one centimeter wide lip for this little tick. I don't know. I might actually drill the lead hole for this bait just in case. Because this balsa wood, it feels very buoyant. And this lip, it might not be enough to weigh this bait down and stabilize it. So I'm going to drill just a tiny lead hole, I think. And uh, when it comes time to pour the lead, I'll be able to see if it even needs it. Just being safe, you know. There's the lip for the tick. Now I need to make the wire. That's the front line tie. Comes right out of the front of the head. That worked out pretty well. Now I need to form the loop on the back. I just have the wire that sticks out the butt right there. I'm gonna put my pliers right there, flush with it, and I'm just gonna form the loop around that. Around that. And that'll be the through wire for this little bait. Oh, I also need to cut a slot in this aluminum lip so it'll actually still fit into that slot and go around the wire. So to cut that slot, I'm gonna use a Dremel tool with a little cutoff wheel. It gets kinda of hot if you hold on to it. There we go. Now the underside of this bait needs a lead hole. So I'm gonna go drill that out on the drill press. I'm gonna use a quarter inch bit and I'm gonna put the lead right in the middle of this thing. That's it. If this bait ends up needing lead, it's not gonna need much at all. So the only details that I'm able to see on these engorged tick are, uh, they got their little head, and I got that, that little thing poking out. And then they got this round spot in the front, and I think that's what the tick's body originally was before it got really engorged. And then it has, a lot of them have some lines up on the top too. So it seems all I really need to do is carve those line details, just one down the middle and then the other two that curve around the edges and then this dark detail and I even looked on the bellies they don't have much going on on the bellies yeah that's the belly and all it has is arms shooting out towards the front maybe they do have some belly detail yeah they got some wrinkles and stuff so disgusting but yeah very simple very little carving to do I'm gonna get that done right now Those dots are where the leg holes are going to be. I'm going to have two small details on the belly, three small details on the top, and that's the head, or the darker part in the front. I found out that when I'm carving on balsa wood, I use super glue a lot. If there's like a super fine detail that I don't want to have messed up after I'm done carving it, I put super glue on it, and it, uh, it really hardens it, and it won't break off on accident while you're handling it and carving the rest of the bait. So like on this little head detail, I'm just covering that in super glue so it doesn't go anywhere. Because I have all this other stuff to carve, and that could easily break off with like no pressure at all. But now it's on there.
So now I'm just going to sand every one of those details smooth and the tick's going to be all carved out. I'm making sure that there's nothing else that I need to do before I glue the through wire in. I'm pretty sure I can do that next and it won't hurt anything or it won't get in the way. It's just going to get super glued into the body. Just like that. So I had a piece of Lexan polycarbonate that was the same thickness as the aluminum lip I was going to use on this bait. So I just made a Lexan one because I'm going to put lead in this bait. And so my thought is I don't need an aluminum lip anymore to weigh it down. The lead will do that and then the clear lip, it'll overall it'll look better for this bait. Now it's time to seal the wood. It's just a quick dip in some wood sealer and I'll be back in a few hours. Okie dokie, we don't want to overdo this. Just a little bit of lead and it should sit upright. There we go. I've got a couple different hook sizes to try with this bait. This is a size 12, super small hook. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna use this one, but we'll see. It floats, it floats nicely too. It doesn't want to sink at all. See what the bigger hook looks like. That one's getting close to sinking. Comes up a lot slower. I'm gonna use the small hook for sure. Now I'm gonna cover the lead hole in some five minute epoxy mixed with glass microspheres as a filler. And I'm also gonna cover up this slot that the wire got set into. But before I do that, I'm pretty sure I need to put the lip in. That way I can cover up this slot right up to the lip and I won't have to try to install the lip after I cover that slot up. There's the lip installed. So now I can come back in a half an hour or so. That'll be fully hardened and then I'll sand it smooth. The last things I need to do before I paint this bait is give it a really good sanding with a 300 grit and then I'm gonna give it a dip in polyurethane and then it's ready for paint. I'm actually going to brush this polyurethane on because I don't want to get any on the lip. There are dog ticks, there's deer ticks, there's uh, lone star ticks, there's seed ticks, there's wood ticks. I don't know if that's the same thing as a dog tick. I've got to figure out which one to paint. I'm leaning towards a deer tick right now. So that lovely specimen will be my reference photo. I don't know if it's picking up on camera. It definitely has a beige-ish, maybe slightly orange butt, the part that's in gorge. And then there's quite a bit of orangish reddish, like dark orangish reddish colors in the, the darker parts in the legs. This is gonna be really simple to paint. Just that's one color, that's another color. I might try to do some, a little bit of fading, but nice and simple. I'm gonna start out with white. I need to get a bucket of water. Good kid. Come on. Get in here. The torch is just to dry the paint really fast so I can spray another layer of white. Look at that dog guard his fence line. Yep, yep. What are you doing? Get in here. You don't have to do that. I was thinking that I needed to mix up a new color to match this, but I realized I've already got something that's pretty close. It's a little bit darker than what I need, but I'm thinking I just won't spray as much. I'll kind of keep the airbrush back and 
lightly mist it. That way there's some white tones too, and then there's some darker tones, and it'll give the back of it kind of some depth with the wrinkle details. It's a weird color that these ticks are. It's hard to match. Seems like there's a little bit too much red in this. It might seem kind of weird, but I think what I need to do to counteract that too much red I put in that is just barely spray a little bit of blue on it. And I think that'll match the color that these actually are. That's perfect. Now to tame the, all of the color a little bit more even, I'm gonna go over and do a light coat of pearlized white over the whole thing. Well, that was quick. That's all it needed for the paint. After the clear coat, I think what's really gonna make this bait look cool is the legs that I'm gonna put on it. I think then immediately you'll be able to identify it as a tick, an engorged tick. But now, it's time to clear coat. I wasn't completely happy with the paint scheme on this, so I'm adding a little bit of white highlights where I think it needs it. It's just so, such a simple paint job, I wanna do more. <laughs> okay, you probably can't even tell the difference, but I'm happy now. So I just gotta do the clear coat for this, uh, install the legs. I'll be able to fish with this tomorrow. I think I just got an idea for another lure. That's a 30 minute epoxy clear coat. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of denatured alcohol to thin the mixture. And that'll be what I clear coat the bait with. Usually takes a little more than two minutes of stirring. Then you got it mixed good enough. I'm hoping I can catch a lot of fish with this bait tomorrow. It was a simple lure to make, but it should be super fun to fish with. A tiny topwater wake bait. The bait is clear coated and all finished, but now I just got eight holes that I need to drill out for all of the legs, four on each side, and I'm gonna add some flashy string to imitate the tick's legs. All right, so I gotta cut eight of these out now. Right now it doesn't matter how long they are because I can always cut them to size. And then I'm just gonna super glue them in. That's one side. Just trying to bend the legs forward a little bit. Kind of set them with the super glue so they're in the right position. There it is. Very simple lure, but pretty neat. An engorged tick. I think the first fishing spot I'm gonna go to today is gonna be a creek. I'm trying to think of interesting places I could go, maybe to try to catch creek chubs or just anything really. Should be pretty easy to catch fish on this bait. See you at the fishing spot. Okay, I think I'm gonna be fishing right there. I'm gonna stand on top of that and fish where it spills down to. Got a little chub. Beautiful fish. It has a super subtle side to side action on the top. It's so fat. I think the body of the bait's so wide that all it does is churn a little bit. It doesn't really wobble side to side, but that's okay. It puts off some action. You can see it in the wake behind it. There's another. A little bit bigger chub this time. 
not too bad. So I caught a few chubs at that first spot with the tick, I'm trying to think of the next spot I want to go. I think I got it. Yeah, I think I know where I want to go now. So there's supposed to be trout in here. At least that's what the signs say. By the way, every fishing lure that I make, I give away on my Patreon page. Every dollar pledged is a chance to win every bait that I made that month. So if you're up for supporting the channel and having a chance to win these lures, head over to my Patreon page. And if you're not a Patreon, still, thank you for watching. Okay, I made it to a uh, small river. All sorts of fish in here. Hopefully we can get one. Oh, he peed on me. Wonderful. Little jerk. Not a bad catch for the little tick. Well, I think I'm going to move spots again because it's very difficult fishing in that uh, river with that bait because it's more of a top water, move slowly bait, and that river had some pretty fast current. Water was pretty high. But we managed to pull a fish out of there, so I'll figure out where to go next and see you there. Could eat that. Coals in the way. So the tick catches fish. We got what do we get? Two creek chubs, a uh, white bass thing at the river, uh, some sort of hybrid gill and a bluegill. So, so not a bad day of fishing for the tick. Today's Chip's birthday. Happy birthday, Chippy. Oh boy. And to celebrate, we're gonna do a giveaway. I've got a bunch of these swim baits laying around. I made these about five months ago. And I was thinking in the comment section below, just comment happy birthday, Chip, and then try and guess what the next lure is that I'm gonna make. And to anybody who guesses right, I'll choose randomly from there who's gonna win a couple of swim baits. If I forget to say any details about the giveaway, it'll just be in the description below. I don't know what paint schemes I'm gonna give away. I got Sexy Shad, Gold Shiner, a uh, Rainbow Gill, Ghost Shiner. That was pretty cool. I can even contact the winner and ask them directly what, what paint scheme they want. Thought that would be a great way to celebrate Chip's birthday. Happy birthday, Chippy. Good luck in the giveaway, and it's on to the next bait.